Okay, it's time to open the Prove My Point module. Let's go through this step by step so that it won't be confusing for you and you will be able to carry on with this particular assignment. Let's go there together. Here we are in the Prove My Point module in the class. Remember that you want to take each one of these pages one at a time in order to not get lost or confused in the preparation for this particular essay. Let's go over things real quickly together. Now first we have to lock our topic and we have the topics and lock information that's included here and down below we see the topics and I believe you've already locked the, your topic in the discussion board. If you haven't, let's chop chop on that. Okay, so here we go. This is the list of topic categories. These are broad general categories and we're going to narrow down to a specific topic. Let's just take that first one right on out there and start with student-centered learning. Now that's a big broad category. How am I going to narrow that down to something specific? Well, first thing I do is I open up a Word document and I say this is my Prove the Point essay. The broad category is student-centered learning. Now this is a position paper, so I'm going to make a decision about this whenever I have a chance to do some research. Let's go over to Google right quick and see what we find when we just type in student-centered learning into the Google search box. I decided to start with this one because this is a .gov site. It indicates that it's going to have some educational .gov. That looks like it's going to be a pretty well vetted site. It's not going to be a blog or something silly. All right, so let's go over there and we're going to look at this. And look at this neat article. Now it's written in 2010, but we're going to find other sources that are current. But this is going to give us a good working condition uh, article on the plans for student-centered learning and what the hope for accomplishment is going to be. So we're going to look through this and see what kind of ideas we get. We see like little bullet points. I like that. That always gives me little topic things. Also down here, I see a neat deal here, which is all the references. And I can add all those references to my Works Cited page because I studied this. I can copy and paste these as well. But the first thing I want to do as soon as I open this page is add it to my Easy Bib because I studied this page. And you can see up here at the top, I'm going to take this URL and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into Easy Bib and I'm going to create a citation so that I'm good and covered on this. Let's go over to EasyBib. Now you already know from looking at the EasyBib tutorials that I created a project called uh, Prove My Point and I have indicated that the topic is going to be student-centered learning and I have already pasted the URL for this article that we're just looking at right here and I have added that to Actually, my project. Okay, so now I'm going to keep narrowing. Where do I go from here? Well, I'm going to go back to my Google search and look what I found. Scholarly articles for student-centered learning. In one place, I found all this information. So let's look at this scholarly articles. Look at this. These are all effective sources that I can learn. So I don't have to go through Google for five hours trying to find relevant articles. I've got them all right here in one handy web reference. We're not going into teachers beliefs. We decided to stay about the benefits, uh, whether the benefits outweigh the problems for adult learners. So teachers input, we don't need too much, not for this essay. Maybe later on we might get excited about that, but not for right now. And we're not going to promote it. We're just talking about the benefits of it for this. So that helps me go through and, and look and see which of these articles I can use all in this nice little handy bundle. This is Here's this one. Okay, and remember, I want to open this one just to show you that this article that I opened up in that little bundle has an author from a college, continues to have documentation. We can use quotes from her 
article as we go through if we find something interesting there that we need. And down here she has references. And all of those references will also be added to our references since we studied her work. That's why I wanted to show that to you. Okay, so now I've kind of narrowed down my focus. I've decided what I want to work on. Let's go back to my Word document. Having looked over some of that information online and through those articles that I've looked at, I decided that I like the title, A New Paradigm for Undergraduate Adult Education. That indicates that I'm going to be in favor of something. Now I've looked at the benefits for the adult learner. I've looked at the challenges, which would be the refutation of the opposition, the challenges student-centered learning presents for the adult learner. And the thesis is going to be a balanced position that student-centered learning for adult undergraduates is an effective and beneficial program. That's going to be my conclusion from all of this learning that I have created. I've made my notes, I've copied my URLs, and so forth. Now I'm going to write my thesis statement, which is going to be underlined, and here it is. Okay, there's my thesis statement. Let's read this out loud together. An effective approach to adult education, student-centered learning has been criticized as a program that many initially resist because they feel the instructor is abdicating his responsibility in shaping the student curriculum. But the benefits of understanding expectations using self-assessment measures, monitoring their own learning to develop strategies for learning, and working in collaboration with other learners produces work that demonstrates authentic learning. That lets the reader know that the first part of my essay will be defining student-centered learning. The next part of my essay is going to cover the people who criticize the program, and the next section of my essay will be going into the three benefits that I believe make this an effective program for adult learners. And those, of course, will be in sections. Section one will be understanding expectations using self-assessment measures. That's going to be a session, section of the essay that explains what those self-assessment measures are. The next section, there may be a few paragraphs in there, the next section that contains multiple paragraphs will be monitoring their own learning develop, learning, to develop strategies for learning. And the third section will be working in collaboration with other learners. And the final product of that is that the work demonstrates authentic learning. Now I hear you right now, you're saying to me, oh my goodness, Professor Hall, how did you get this thesis statement from that research that we just did? Well, let's go back and see where I got the bones for this thesis statement. Let's go together. Remember this little cool article that we started with at the very beginning? Well, that's where all this came from. Because you can see right here, many initially resist what they perceive as the instructor's abdication of his responsibility to manage instruction. That's where the opposition came from. Then when we looked at the three areas of the essay, those are right over here. And the final outcome that I find to be a benefit is producing work that demonstrates authentic learning. Now, yes, I'm going to have to go back and Google authentic learning so that I get a, a working definition of what that means, but that's exactly what my thesis is going to do. Now, when I go back to that article, let's say I change my mind a minute and I go back over to that little article that we found. Let's go there together. Let's say I look at this list of things that are wonderful and I change my mind and I decide I want to look at a couple of others instead of one or whatever it is that I want to do. That's fine. But I want to get on it because this is due pretty quick so I just need to pick the three that I like. Right over here I have my opposition, my resistance, right? 
Now, in addition, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find other ways of proving my point. So, I've gone on over here to a real cool thing. And that's easy bib. I was looking for refutation to see if anybody in here has done a tutorial that says that student-centered learning doesn't really work. And But what I did find was this guy talking about how it does work. And remember, YouTube tutorials are perfectly acceptable. Now, it can't be somebody's blog. It needs to be somebody professional. But I can use a YouTube tutorial super easy. And if I decide I like this tutorial and I want to use some, some quotes from it, and I'll have to write down those quotes myself, and I'll make sure that I cite that it came from this YouTube tutorial, all I do is go to share, and then I have this URL. I go back over to my EasyBib. Let's go back over to EasyBib together. And I pop that URL from that YouTube tutorial. That's not it, but I'll go get it. Hold on. So I popped that URL in, it found it. I'm gonna cite it. See, it's always gonna find a YouTube thing. That's the nice thing about EasyBib. Continue. And if there's a speaker or something else, I might fill in their name. It's just asking me if there's anything else that I wanna do, and then I complete the citation. Okay, and there it is in my list, right? Yes? Perfect. Moving on. Now remember, I'm going to add all those references that were in each of these articles. So this list is going to be super long. And when I'm all finished, I will go to export. Export to a Word doc. Download for MS Word. And that's going to bring up this little tray down in my computer. And I'm going to click that little tray. Word's going to open. And there are my citations. Now from here, those citations that I added from the other websites, remember? I'm going to enable editing so I can add those in. I'm going to have to add those in alphabetically. So all those ones that came from the articles that I read, I'm free to use those, and I can copy and paste them in here, but then I have to move them around to where they are alphabetically correct. Yes? Okay. So at this stage of the game, we have watched the video tutorial, the objectives. We've locked the topic. We've narrowed the topic. And now we move on into the next pages, which explain how to create an argument paper. This is the checklist of requirements. Want me to go over those with you right quick before I close out this tutorial? Okay, I will. Well, first I remember to start collecting my images, and I remember that I do not use any logos. There will be a point deduction if I do. So, this is the checklist. The essay, the outline, an abstract, references, qualitative work, at least four high color resolution images that are not logos, but are in action images, and a works cited page. And there you go. Now I could hear you through the computer, and you just said an abstract. What's an abstract? Well, it's right there. And when you go to that abstract, there is a nice little tutorial that tells you how to do it. It's super easy, and it looks really fancy when you write an essay. And it's a good time to learn it in this course so that you will be brilliant and impress your instructors as you move on. So there's a PDF on how to write an abstract, and there's a nifty little tutorial. It's much, much easier than it might sound. It is step-by-step -step instructions and you will always go right when you have that. Yes? This is a really neat little page that I added two years ago, and boy has it made a good difference for students. And that's this, how to select images for your essay. And when you put in images, graphs, and charts, that's called qualitative analysis. And uh, then there's some examples for you to see. 
So you can see what other students have written in the past, and that is very helpful, I think. And then this is where you submit that essay when it's due. And this is the one, folks, that's going to provide for the institution a number of words for your accreditation as a student who has fulfilled the requirements for words written. And that's where this word count business really does come in handy. This is where you will put your name, course, date, argument essay, which is to prove my point. That's an argument essay. Your word count, which would be drafts. You're going to estimate that. It's an honor system. You figure out about how many words you wrote in the notes that you've taken, in the drafts that you've written. Every time you edit a draft, you get those points for the essay as it stood before and for the essay as it stood after your editing. Then you have your final word count. The final word count will include the abstract and the essay. It will not include the outline or the work cited, but you still had got credit for that up here by doing all your drafts, and that does enter in there. And this is just an honor system number, and it's going to be a big number of all the drafts you've written for this essay. Now you're going to have the title. You're going to have an image that represents the thesis, not a logo. Don't start your essay off by losing points. The abstract, the essay, works cited in MLA format, and the outline. All of that's one long document. You create a Word document and add all those items. Save it all in a nice, compact PDF and submit that PDF. This is a high point count assignment, so take your time on this and enjoy it. Once you get it narrowed down, it becomes just fun. When we go back and look at our, at our uh, thing that we're doing, we know that section one is going to be a definition of what student-centered learning is. We know that the next section, which may be a couple of paragraphs, is going to tell us why there's been resistance. And then the next section is going to be the benefit of understanding and measures. The next section is going to be monitoring their own learning. The next section is going to be working in collaboration with others. And then the final is going to be that these benefits produce work that is authentic learning. And what makes this into an argument essay is that that doesn't need to go in the thesis statement because you've already indicated that you are in favor of this. But the next section, let's say that that's section, I'm going to put a section number here for an outline. Right? So this was my thesis statement. And then I go through the outline and I fill out all these things in the outline. And then the last part of my outline before my conclusion is my position based on the research conducted and an interview I conducted with a college student who has benefited from student learning centered, centered learning. I believe this new movement toward authentic learning is beneficial to the adult learner in the new community college environment. You take a position. That's what makes this an argument essay rather than just a little old research paper. You personally have taken your position based on all that you have learned and researched. And where are you going to find a student to interview? Well, you might find one right here in this classroom. You might go over to the open forum and you might look, I'm looking for a student that I can interview and who has been involved in student-centered learning. And you can find that. Or you can go over to campus and you can ask somebody. You can ask an administrator and change that from a student to an administrator. Although I always, I always feel like if you get it from somebody who's benefiting from that, it's wonderful. So that's going to be that section. It's going to be a little paragraph, probably just one paragraph. And then after that's going to come your conclusion. And that's where you're going to conclude all these elements of student-based learning, right? So, the module is all ready to unpack, everything's ready to go, and you are ready to take the step-by-step -step process of writing this important essay in the course. 
And again, remember, you can watch this tutorial and all the tutorials in the module as many times as you need to make sure that you're clear of what's expected in this essay. 1,500 words. Uh, the thesis statement, I hope that you've learned from that, and I know it was a prerequisite skill, and you all probably knew that, and probably throughout this entire tutorial that I've given to you, you've said, I already know that, I already know that, I already know that, but just in case you didn't and needed a refresher, here it is for you. I'm excited about these topics and see what you do with them, and that's